past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello everybody. This is Kirusho here. And now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Deku. And well, quite a bit of things have happened for him. Now, in the last part, Deku, after meeting with Seiso Shigaraki, a copy made by All for One, he discovered a few things. Because of his interactions with Seisho, he had a strange episode or zone out where he did see more and more of the past. Except he saw it the way all for one to see it. Now, Deku, because of this, his mental deterioration has sped up. Deku had, at the very best, a year left to live. However, now the best estimate for how long he has left alive is about six weeks. And yikes. That is pretty bad. Now, with that being said, quite a bit of things have happened. Now, Deku, ever since this news was found, he did want to hide it from Melissa and David. At least for some time before he does know how to express it to them. Except Melissa, she immediately found out. And you do actually have Seiso Shigaraki. Who, yeah. This was all sorts of bad. Now. He did sit down with Melissa, All Might, and Deku. Discussing what he does know about the Nomu with Melissa. And giving her all the information he can where they are missing pieces. Now. That was last week. And the copy of Seisho, he's already vanished. One day he just suddenly turned to mud. And it was kind of upsetting to Deku. For the first time in a long time he met somebody who they were a part of his life before. But now they're just gone. Deep down it did upset him. And he did actually just start to build a emotional bridge with this man. Now, with that being said, Deku, yeah, a lot of things would happen here. In the span of this week, Melissa and David, they would increase their efforts with the research. Dedicating more time to it and even spending more time in the UA lab or a empty room that they did previously turn into a lab. Now, with that being said, Melissa, yeah, she hasn't really left the room in a long time. Deku's had to bring her food and even bring her coffee. Since she herself believes that very soon, an ally or a friend of theirs will actually be able to come to UA to help. They'll be able to actually do a proper Nomu experiment. Now, the person was very concerned. They went over many of the notes that they were given, along with even this extra information from All for One. And the idea of performing these experiments on a live test subject that is human it did somewhat unsettle them. Now, Melissa, she did talk to this person along with David. David expressing that this person, they, well, how to put it the best way, are already getting closer and closer to death. They do want to help to uncover the effects of mental deterioration and try to reverse it, if at all possibly stop it from happening. Now, the idea of this was actually very tempting to this person. The idea of unlocking more and more of the brain's secrets. 
that's not something they really want to pass up. Now then, the person talked about how in about two and a half weeks, they might be able to actually get to UA. However, they do actually want to verify some more and more of their own research with the material they've been given. Now then, with that being said, we do actually have Class 1A, where they are currently going on the summer training camp, or to the tr summer training camp for their field trip. And Deku, he's actually been asked by Mr. Aizawa to attend. Now, Deku, he really didn't understand it. However, Aizawa, he did talk about how many of the students were very disappointed in that final exams. And that the students, they all do wish to face him again. Now, Deku, he did so to understand this. This would give him time to get away from UA for a minute. Along with that, he can actually even at least see Bakugo and talk to him some more. Now, there's also at least a suspicion Aizawa does have that he does fill Deku in on. If he's correct because Class 1A will be away from UA and that All Might won't be attending this field trip, he believes that somebody or the League of Villains have a possibility of attacking them. Now, Deku was quite surprised by this. Aizawa, he really should have expected that with this guy, along with Class 1A. These people are walking villain magnets, and it completely is just ridiculous. Now, Deku, he would have gotten on the bus the day the field trip was supposed to leave. Deku bringing Melissa her favorite coffee from a coffee shop, and then going to leave. Now, we do actually have where many different people did actually want to talk to Deku. However, he did actually sit in front of Mr. Aizawa. And he was going over a few things on his phone. Now, Melissa's talking about how they're verifying more and more material. And with what Seisho did tell them, they believe that the experiment has a 98% chance of succeeding. Now, Deku, he does hear that. 98% chance. Melissa explaining it more, along with even David. David does explain that this 2% chance of margin, or error, it's quite possibly just that. They're trying to reduce the margin for error to the lowest possible point. At the beginning of the experiment, the margin for error was about 50-50. Since, if you do want to consider it, that's all it will ever be at the lowest. 50-50 or 0. Now, there was even where he talked about how if you are 100% sure of the experiment, then it will go as planned. And there will only be minor failures instead of catastrophic ones. Now, Deku, yeah, he doesn't completely understand that, but he's not going to question the scientists who are working in genetic engineering. Now, Deku, yeah, he does get to the forest training camp with everybody, or at least Mr. Aizawa, after class 1A, they were dropped off. I'm not apologizing for that pun. Anyways, now, as Deku was sitting on a bench, he actually did look around, as he did see Koda. Now, the kid he did just stare at Deku. Since he was told that there would be pro heroes or teachers here, along with Class 1A, who's currently going through the forest, but this guy doesn't look like a, well, student. He's not dressed like one, and he's not wearing a pro hero outfit, he's just wearing normal clothes. Koda going to walk over and actually sit down with Deku. Um, hi. Hmm? Hey, kid. You're not a pro hero, are you? Hmm? No. You're that guy from the sports festival, though, right? Yeah, I am. The one during the final match? Yeah, that one. How'd you do that? I heard that you had multiple quirks. Huh? Oh, yeah, I do. Really? What are they? Oh. Um. 
that could just bring up one of his hands. Blasting fire, as he does then go to blast smoke out of his hand. And I'm going to bring up his hand and go to turn on one for all. As he does go to bring up one finger and go to flick it, as it does cause air pressure that does smash into a tree. Deku explained that that's one quirk and it's an enhancement quirk. Now, Koda is quite surprised, as Deku does continue talking about all of his strange quirks. Now, Koda, he's very impressed. From what Deku, or he does understand from Deku, he doesn't want to really be a hero anymore. However, he's got so much power behind him. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Now, this would be where a few hours later, or let's just say an hour or two later, Class 1 would show up. And Deku is just sitting there talking with Koda. As he does look up to see the students. Now, this is where many of them, they do want to talk to Deku. They're confused as to why he didn't have to participate, if he's around their age. Now, this is at least what one person was screaming. Well, Deku, he did explain to them that he is as strong as All Might, if not stronger than him. Now, a lot of the people were surprised by that statement, as they think Deku, he really did not mean it. No. Deku, he would have expressed to them that he really is. As he does do one thing, he does turn on full cowling. As his turn on about 60%. Now, this is Deku at his lowest control level of one for all. Or at his body's maximum control level without strain. Deku actually going to charge up his fist with 80%. He's just going to turn towards the forest. And forming all of them to hold on to something. As does look towards Koda and actually go to bring up his hand with Black Whip. Now. Deku does wrap Koda in black up as he doesn't go to put him behind him. Deku going to throw out a massive punch. Now, the moment Deku does actually go to throw out that punch, a large shockwave can be heard. Many of the students, they all do at least try to stand their ground, but get sent flying backwards. As you actually have where Deku, he does actually go to undo his hand and go to actually shake off his fist. Many of the students are going to get back up on their feet as he do look at the direction. Everywhere in front of Deku. Now, it was all quite insane. Since it was not possible, Deku just completely obliterated an entire line of trees in front of him. Now, I do want to say if the Kamino event is anything to go off of and Deku, that All Might matching all for one in power, but actually being able to match or at least go up against it. Deku being twice as strong as him and all for him being able to do that event, I want to say Deku possibly could level a city. Or at least half of one, which is still a very destructive event. Possibly even a fourth. Now, everyone they do look at the damage Deku did cause. As could be best described as at least, let's just say, seven to eight different city blocks all being annihilated. Now, everyone and their jaws do hit the ground. This guy was holding back in their fight, and he just did that. Now, with that being said, everyone they do begin their own training, and there is actually Deku, who, yeah, whenever the Class 1A kids do do their corp training, and they do want to do combat training, since Deku's here, they all do try and face him, as if you can expect it. A 20v1 does go the same way over and over and over and over again. Now, there is even whenever Deku talked about how he won't use his strength enhancement. And even then, he did actually struggle. He does use Fa Jin. However, nobody, they really do know about that quirk. They do just know that he does possess some other strange ability that does have something to do with speed. And it's very strange to them. Now, there is actually at the end of the two weeks, where everybody, they're all doing the strength of courage. But the test of courage, it's not strength of courage, the test of courage, and they all do plan to actually go into the forest. Now, 
Deku he's talking to many of the other kids in Class 1A, as many of them are all quite surprised at his power. Now, Deku he does just sit there somewhat quiet, and he's thinking back about his conversations with Seisho Shikaraki. Now, from what he does understand currently, they're trying to get some of the top ranking heroes in position. Shigaraki, he did inform them all about where the base was, and even where a possible Nomu factory was, where All for One does rest his head. It was all quite strange. They know for a fact All for One is in Kamino, and they know for a fact where the bar is. Now, you do actually have Deku, where tonight, whenever he was gathered on Class 1A, and all of them were talking about doing the test of courage, and heading into the forest, Deku's danger sense immediately does go off. As Deku does go to actually fly up into the air, and everyone they do look over towards him. As soon as Deku does get into the air, he does look around the forest to see fire, as Deku would make a phone call to Aizawa. Now, Aizawa, yeah, this is all bad. And we do actually currently have Deku who he does go flying in and take out the League of Villains. Now, he is told by, I believe it's Mandalay, that Koda is still in the forest. And as Deku is taking out the fake Dobby, you do actually have where he did go to try and find Koda. As you do have whenever a large explosion or event did happen, which was basically Musky just punching down at the earth. Now, we do actually have where Deku he does come flying in as he does see Koda. As Deku does come flying in, he does actually punch with Fa Jin and using one for all. As if I do have my math correct, one for all made up for 55%, or Fa Jin made up for 55% of one for all, and with Deku currently at 60 to possibly even 80%, that would be 135% smash. Or I could just say that this is a stronger Fall Jin because Deku is stockpiling perpetual motion. So let's just actually round that up to like 170 now. With that being said, Deku basically just punched him with a force of three All Mights at full power. And yeah. Muscular got sent flying and smashing into a wall. As Deku did take the man out. Now. Deku does turn towards Koda. As he does run forwards, grabbing the kid and going to fly up into the air. As Class 1A, they're still trying to handle the rest of the villains. Now then, we actually do have Mr. Compress, who does go to kidnap his chosen candidates. Or All for Ones. Now, All for One is trying to kidnap Bakugo Katsuki, Ibarra, and, hmm, let's say Soji. Or Shoji, because I feel like that his quirk is actually very useful. If Shoji can grow extra limbs, could he regrow his head? Or could he grow his head on a limb, actually? That's a very good question. He can grow organs, and the brain is technically classified as an organ, but it doesn't pass through the brain the it doesn't pass through the brain blood barrier, so I feel like it would not be possible. Now I am Rambling, I'm sorry guys. Now, with that being said, Mr. Compress will try and kidnap these candidates. And you do actually have where Deku, he does come flying in and take out the man. The League of Villains, they were basically captured the moment they stepped foot in the forest. And we actually do have all for one who was very annoyed. Now, all for one, he does just decide to send in more and more Nomu. To try and drive Class 1A away, along with even the boy. Now, we do actually have where a portal does open up. Deku seeing it as he does watch millions, or not millions, but a lot of Nomu come stepping out. Dozens, I mean. Now, Deku, he would actually turn to Class 1A to run, as they need to get the hell out of here. You do actually have Mr. Aizawa. Who, as Deku does go leaping into combat, he does actually go to bring up his hand. 
turning Black Whip into an actual sword. Or let's just say a giant blade that's coming out of his wrist. Now, Deku, he would actually have the sword elongate as he does actually throw it forwards and it is going to wrap around many Nomu. Deku actually going to fly through the portal. Now, as it does actually happen, the portal it would close. And Aizawa, he does see that. This being very bad. As we do actually have on the other side, where Kirigiri and All for One, they're actually at the Nomu factory. Deku, he does come flying through the Nomu. As he does actually start, well, by barreling through the air and smashing through a wall with them. Now, the moment that actually does happen, Deku does turn his head to see All for One as he's staring at the man. And All for One does just look down towards Deku. Now, the doctor, yeah, he's in the room. And he is not happy with what he's currently seeing. Now, the doctor would go to run as Deku does turn and go to actually throw a black whip before the man. As you do have, where Kirigay does go to open up a portal. And Deku does turn to see the man as actually does go to bring up one of his hands and go to blast fire at him. Now, Kirigiri, he does go to open a portal in front of himself and go to open one behind Deku. As Deku actually does go flying in and go to actually dodge underneath one of the portals before coming up and directly smashing Kirigiri as hard as he can in the throat with his fist. Now, the actual attack does actually punch into and break Kirigiri's neck as he's going flying backwards and smashing into a wall where he's been rendered immobile. Now, this is where Deku does turn towards all for one and look directly at the man. Hello, brother. You again. I don't know exactly who you are, but you really shouldn't be impersonating Yochi. Hmm? Calm down, Seisho. Deku to say. Going to bring up his hand. Is this going to pull the hair tie holding his hair back? Now, the hair actually does go moving downwards and rushing down in front of Deku's face. Before Deku just does bring up his hands and going to ruffle his hair a bit before going to bring his hands back up and then going to at least look or move his body in a certain way and stand. And you do actually have where Seisho does just stand there frozen for a second. The exact posture Deku's holding, along with the way he does look, it is him, isn't it? So, you aren't a faker. You know I'm not. What makes you so certain that I'm not a faker? What makes you so certain? Okay? Tell me. How about that? <laughs> Please. The moment I tell you is the moment that you win. Hmm? What do you mean I win? Ah, controlling this body is amazing. It's actually pretty fun. However, you do actually have where he does try to take back control from me. He was my little pet. However, he didn't understand not to bite the hand that feeds. You're not him, are you? Hmm. There's a smart little boy. So. <sighs> You're the one I've heard so much about. The one who got him riled up. Ah. <sighs> You're very annoying. However, I guess killing you again was the only way he remains dormant. Now, Deku, he doesn't really fully understand. However, he's piecing it together. The person who's currently in control of Seisho Shigaraki. Now, they're not just some ordinary jumbled mass of memories, are they? There's actually another subconscious put inside of his own head. Now, Deku, he does go rushing forwards, towards this all-for-one, or the person stuck inside Seisho's body. As Seisho does go to bring up their hand, and begin to start creating the All Might killing weapon. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. Catch you guys in the next part.